And I'm joined here in studio by Arna Lietz. He's a member of the European Parliament for Germany's Social Democrats and serves on the Committee for Foreign Affairs. And he's just come back from a fact-finding mission in Turkey where he met ministers, opposition lawmakers, journalists, and NGOs. And Mr. Lietz, thanks so much for being with us here in studio. Thank you uh, much for having me. From your discussions on your trip to Turkey, how worried are people there about this move to strip parliamentarians from their immunity? People and lawmakers and politicians are very, very worried, uh, depending on who you talk to. But in particular, our sister party, the HDP, the pro-Kurdish party, uh, has met uh, that of uh, 59 members, uh, there would be 50 which we could use their immunity and then would be brought to court by their uh, anti-terror legislation, which is still up uh, in the air until now. And uh, so they are uh, thinking if that happens, uh, the parliamentary system uh, would get a big damage. And it could be that we get new elections coming up. You don't know how that uh, plays out, but this party will that not be working anymore in the parliament as it used to be. Looking at the crisis we have uh, in southeast of uh, Turkey, that could uh, rise uh, the tension uh, in the region. And therefore, um, they have been very much fearful of that situation. Do you see this as just part of a bigger trend of um, more authoritarian rule in Turkey? Absolutely. We have talked to many people, also to NGOs, uh, like uh, reporters of our borders. We have talked to academics uh, who have been signing a resolution for peace in the southeast. And uh, while they did so, uh, they are now uh, out of uh, office. They have been sent home. Um, they have been uh, investigated by the police officers and also some of them are already brought to court. So uh, Erdogan and his system uh, would like to uh, silence critical voices. And in that regard, um, we are looking at many media people we have met. Mr. Dündar, for example, from a Cum Harriet. He has been uh, brought to jail for 90 days. Uh, he came out, he was uh, at court, he got off, but uh, there was an attack just afterwards. And uh, he came back even from Sweden, where he uh, got an award uh, this week, because he would like to show that he is not in fear, even his life is under threat. And the um, uh, media situation is very, very difficult. So I would not only call it an authoritarian system, I would think that we're going towards a dictatorship. That's what he said, and uh, I see that. All right, Mr. Leitz, we're going to come back to you in just a moment, but we want to take a closer look at what you're talking about. As we've heard, opposition parties in Turkey claiming President Erdogan is amassing power in his own hands. They say they have to struggle with a host of new restrictions. And with no sign of a change in course by the president, opposition supporters say they are beginning to lose hope. She is considered the new hope of the Turkish opposition. Sarah Kadagil sits on the board of the Social Democratic Party, the CHP. With 25 percent of the vote, it is the largest opposition party in the Turkish parliament. Three years ago, the young lawyer was fighting for the preservation of Istanbul's Gezi Park, a dispute that became a power struggle between the opposition and the Erdogan government. Today, Kadagil sees the chances of the opposition winning power waning fast. No one in the opposition parties, even we in the CHP, could ever have imagined that the political situation here would have declined so quickly. We try to pretend that we're still able to make changes, as if we have normal political competition among the parties. But this is a system that doesn't care about the rule of law and the constitution. So the allegation that the opposition is not doing enough is unfair. Kadigil complains that the president tries to control all aspects of daily life. Even Istanbul's building policy is controlled from Erdogan's palace. This, she says, has nothing to do with democracy. Erdogan wants to make his mark with mega projects, such as building a new airport, the third in Istanbul. He wants it to be the largest airport in the world. With the current system in place, Erdogan will accumulate even more power. Critics within his party are gradually being pushed aside. People such as Abdul Latif Shanir. Shanir was a founder of the ruling AKP party and served as deputy prime minister from 2002 to 2007. Today, he says there is no one in the AKP capable of challenging Erdogan. We started as a party with a management team, not an autocrat. Now Erdogan has not only sidelined the democratic consensus of the party, but also the constitution of this country. No one can call this a democratic leadership. 
There are very few remaining media outlets available to the opposition, so Shanir seldom has a chance to give interviews. And under Erdogan's government, the university teacher is no longer able to find work. The universities first say they'll hire me, then send a letter explaining that they are sorry, but they are not able to offer me a position. This has happened seven times already. Someone has given an order to prevent me from working at Turkish universities. The opposition parties are paralyzed. Should President Erdogan become the absolute ruler of Turkey, they also fear political extinction. Let's bring back Arna Leitz, member of the European Parliament, for more on this story. Mr. Leitz, the question of visa-free travel in the EU, I have to ask you about that. Where do you stand on this? Well, I stand on the question that uh, we have uh, agreed on a joint uh, roadmap. Turkey and the EU has uh, matched uh, and has said that 72 benchmark has to be matched. And uh, if they are not going to be fulfilled, then the visa liberalization would not come. I stand on the point that we have to fulfill all of them. In particular, the one uh, on the human rights situations, uh, there is an anti-terror legislation still going on, which includes, as we have just seen in this film, uh, uh, media people, uh, media institutions, uh, academics. And in that regard, uh, we stand as a parliament very strong that this has to be fulfilled. And so Erdogan will not get the visa liberalization. Um, even he tries to put and bring this into the deal. And given those concerns that you've expressed, um, do you think that Ankara should be working that closely with Brussels? Well, Brussels should close very closely to the civil society, to the media institutions, the parliamentarians have to work together. Um, we are looking and facing the same threat uh, um, on Syria. We have to mm -hmm. work together on that. So there are many fields we should work together. All right, Arna Leeds from the Parliament. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.